first turn. And, oh, he has to pass. Owen doesn't really have a turn one play to KO a throw key. Preston just needs Grinning. He needs a, a turn two water duplicates. Double throw key is the ideal turn one. But Owen here, he, he can't do 60 damage with Tapu Lele. Unless he drops a Professor Kakui, and spoiler alert, like every other of these decks, he's not playing it. There will be no KO. One of the things Preston's got to watch out for here is Garboda, the ability locking Garboda. So Owen gets a Trubbish down right away. Yeah, the ability locking Garboda, he plays two copy of them, which is good news because we've just got a glimpse of Owen's price cam. And the price cam reveals that there are two Guzma and one of the Garbo Toxin Garboda. They are in his prizes and Preston is going to need Field Blower to get rid of them. He plays the free Field Blower. There we go. <laughs> Bit of a tongue twister. One of them is in his prizes. He's got access to two of them. This is on paper an unfavorable matchup for Preston. We've got the we've got the Garboda which blocks abilities and we've got the Golisopod hitting for weakness. Preston here, if he's got a Frogadier, he's probably going to be okay. Yeah, and for Preston, when you're navigating that Greninja deck, you usually have slow turn one. So, of course, you always get a little bit nervous if there's just a draw pass. But in this case, Preston has his Froakie. He would ideally have a second Froakie in his turn one. Didn't find that one. Now he has a Professor Sycamore. Now he has Brooklet Hill. So there is another Froakie. But the one thing that he really needs in this turn is a Frogadier. And if he doesn't have a Frogadier, essentially what he does is he gives Owen a turn. He gives him a prize, and then he comes back and he water duplicates one turn later, which means you're using water duplicates after your opponent's taken one more prize. That is not a good situation to be in. We saw this in games of Michael Long in the Masters. When you're playing Greninja, you've got to set up without giving away too many prizes. Oh, he's got the Evo Soda, though. That will get him a Frogadier. He's got the energy. He will be able to water duplicates, and... Cheeky little enhanced hammer on the double colorless. That was pretty nice too. It is also going to be the full army of Frogadier just in a minute here. As we know that there are no Frogadier prize. He just took a look through his deck through the Brooklet Hill. And he knows once he announces that water duplicates, three Frogadier are going to hit the bench. And this is a great turn for Preston here. Greninja has a very kind of, a very easy, very simple first couple of turns. We see these Gardevoir decks. He wants Wear Candy, he wants Gardevoir, he wants Octillery, he wants Rare Candy, Gallade. Greninja's like, I would like a stage one with a single energy. Well, uh, all of a sudden, there are a couple of more stage ones. So Preston's board is building up nicely here. Even though he had a rather slow turn one, this is all that he could ask for. His turn ends with the water duplicates. And now Owen on Owen's side. Of course, he is already looking into evolving his Wimpart into Golisopod, which is going to be his main attacker throughout this whole match. And Golisopod here hitting for weakness. That first impression will do 240 for a single energy, provided it started on the bench and became active that turn. That is more than enough to KO even your 170 HP Greninja break. Owen here really wanted a Bridget. Great news. Owen's got a Bridget and he hasn't had to play a Tapu Lele to draw into one. No energy on the field yet. The ideal scenario for Owen here would be Floatstone with a Glycopod and a Grass Energy to start taking some prizes. But I think he's going to be content for now to grab Truck KO with Energy Drive. But the ideal for Owen would be a free Energy Golisopod so he can just stay in the active and just keep taking prizes. Yeah, it looks like that his hand is not exactly offering this kind of play. There's a double colorless decides against attaching it to Tapu Lele to pick up the first KO here on the active Frogadier. Um, it's also interesting to note that Owen left one space on the bench available. It's always good to have the option available of playing a Tapu Lele if you need a supporter card. And if we look at his hand, he's got a Guzma and a double colorless energy. He wants a Golisopod. I like that play from him. Now... He could have taken a prize off the Frogadier. He could then have used that double colors to retreat next turn. But I think what he was basically thinking is, if Preston's got a enhanced hammer, and he plays two, all the, if a Greninja plays it, they play two. That is a very standard thing that, mo that every player who is at this level really knows at this stage. He's thinking, is it really worth doing it? Owen knows that if he gets a combination of Garbotoxin and Golisopod, he is going to be able to win this game. I've played this matchup. I went to a League Cup not too long ago. I was playing the deck that Owen's playing. I faced against two Greninjas, and it's not even about rushing for prizes like it often is against Greninja. It is a very simple thing. You want a Golisopod with free energy. You want a Garbotoxin Garboda. 
and then you should have a fairly easy route to victory unless your opponent hits things like Guzma and Field Blower at the exact right time. Yeah, for Preston here, he likes to see, obviously, that Owen has a rather slow start because Greninja just takes a couple of turns to really set up. A Greninja break obviously takes three turns at least to show up, and so he likes to see that there is nothing really happening on Owen's field so far. For Owen, he has a Tapu Lele in hand, so this is exactly what he needed, the available bench space here. Um, he will have to use its ability to find something, some supporter that will give him access to more cards. But Preston, on the other hand, he is using now the water stitching and this means that the abilities are off on Owen's field. That is going to be awkward, things like that Tapu Lele for instance, which we know he wanted to play to draw into something he doesn't have. He's got a Garboda but it's not the Garboda that he really wants unfortunately. So Preston here has had a very good start. I said that Owen didn't need a really explosive start and he doesn't but he needs a better start than this. Yeah, there's on, the only option really is a Guzma at this point. So Owen promoting Octillery on Preston's sides, maybe trying to buy himself some time because the only thing that he has is a double colorless energy and a Tapu Lele. He's saving the Tapu Lele in hope that there's not going to be any shadow stitching next turn. And the free energy there on the wind pod, which will hopefully become a Goliath pod. I like this. We know that there's an enhanced hammer that Preston is going to be able to play at some point. But it doesn't really matter, because if he plays an enhanced hammer, then Owen can just attach one of his third or fourth double colorless energy, and then he knows it won't be vulnerable to an enhanced hammer. One of the things, it's a little bit over the top, but he might even, Owen, be tempted to attach two double colorless to his Goliath pod, just so that if an enhanced hammer comes down, he can still use that armor press. Armor press does 200 to a Greninja break. That is easily enough to get a one-hit KO. And as much as Preston is able to recover things like Froakie and Frogadier, it takes a while to get up to Greninja break. You are not expecting to have your Greninja breaks one hit KO'd. When they do get one hit KO'd, that's how matches go south very quickly. But that Octillery is stuck in the active. Owen is going to get his Tapu Lele. Yep, Owen's strategy is checking out here. There is the Tapu Lele, and he is probably going for something like a Professor Sycamore. He needs to draw into something. He needs to move the active trouble. He wants a good icy body. He wants to take a couple of prizes very quickly. I think that's absolutely what he's going to be trying to do. I mean, the ideal situation here, if he can grab a Floatstone, Golisopod, and a Breakpoint Garboda, then he's going to get that ability lock while getting Golisopod going, and that is going to be absolutely wonderful here. Of course, there is every possibility he doesn't hit that perfect hand, but he, I believe, got the Golisopod there. He's got a uh, ultra ball and did he, he hit the float stone as well this is everything he needed here as long as that was a Golisopod I can't quite see that first card but he's at least got the Golisopod with the float with the ultra ball if nothing else but Oh, I cannot see that first card in his hand, Julian. It's driving me crazy. <laughs> it's driving you crazy. We'll find out just in a second. Owen is uh, rather protective here of his hand cards. And, of course, you would be in the finals. So the Ultra Ball is coming out. If you wanted to have a Golisi pod, he's going to get it right now. And he's eyeing it out as we speak. So it's on top of his deck there. And the second ideal card that he would eventually find himself is obviously the, uh, the Garboder from Breakpoint, shutting off all of Greninja's abilities and including, of course, also Octillery's Abyssal hand. And one of the things that really excites me here about Owen's play, he had the grass energy in hand, or the rainbow energy, which counts the grass energy. He's actually kept free energy on one, one energy on another, so now that armor press or first impression or whatever he chooses to use, he is going to be able to keep armor pressing every single turn. Even if that Golisopod gets KO'd, he's got another Golisopod ready to go. Unfortunately, he didn't get the breakpoint Garboda. That's big, because if Preston's got two water energy in his hand, he can use Giant Water Shuriken twice, KO that Trubbish on the bench, and guarantee that for at least one more turn, there will be no ability lock from Owen. And even though Owen is hitting for weakness with Golisopod, if you're not turning off abilities, this matchup becomes infinitely harder. 
Yeah, and Preston is looking at his Stario there on the bench while he's playing a Guzma. Unfortunately for him, the Stami is in his prize cards, hidden in the prize cards, so the easy access to uh, energy cards is not available through that option. While he is using Guzma and using the same strategy for own, he's trying to get that Gabor in the active spot. I like that. He used Shadow Stitching there, turn off some of those abilities. Owen now is drawing a whole bunch of cards. He really just wants another Floatstone. I mean, Guzma would be perfect here, because because that splash energy is going to protect if that Greninja break gets KO'd all of the Pokemon cards go back into his hand that is not really what you're looking for here he wants to be taking out the one that's not getting recovered while putting his Golisopod active but it doesn't look like he even hit a float stone there so he could just attach a rainbow energy and trash a lunch. But I don't think Preston's played many item cards here. We see an Ultra Ball there, an Evo Soda, a Field Blower. Five, it, I believe. Yeah, that's not actually... That's more than I was expecting, to be honest. That was not an insignificant amount of damage. Yeah, they could uh, fan service would be to place a uh, dice there right next to the discard pile so we could see how many item cards are hidden in there. But we can see now from the damage that is dealt to the active Greninja break, there's quite some damage, quite uh, possibly uh, even a two-hit KO uh, on a fresh Greninja break if he uh, chooses to promote one. And there we go. Um, we have a KO on the Owen. Uh, I think there was a, a... Moonlight Slash. Was it the Moonlight Slash? It was not the ability. No, it was a Moonlight Slash. I know it was a Moonlight Slash because he popped a Water Energy down and put it back into his hand. Also, a Moonlight Slash without it would have left Garboda on 110, which would not have been enough to get a KO. So it had to be the attack for 80 there, putting Garboda up to 130. It's always now, good to be commentating with a math teacher. <laughs> I do like numbers. I really like numbers. Which, to be fair, in the Pokemon trading card game is a really good trait to have. Now, we do see a Guzma coming down here. I like this play so much I love this Guzma play he's going to be able to take out the bench Greninja break and then of course there's one Greninja break in play yeah it's got a splash energy but also it's got 140 damage on it there we go, and now the Fresh Team Ninja Break is active through the Guzma, and of course the Armor Press is going to be picking up that KO immediately, so Owen going down to four prize cards, and Preston promoting his Greninja Break again. We can see here Owen still was not able to find that Garbo Toxin Garboda. It's still hidden there in the prize card in the second copy somewhere in his deck. He's going to be able to find it at some point. He's not in a huge hurry at the moment. Preston got two Greninja Break. That was great. Well, one of them's gone down. The other one's going down this turn. Although I do want to give a quick shout out to our judging staff. Somebody out there is listening. No, we need that dice. <laughs> Don't take that dice. I'm just in the middle of saying that is a dice that tells us how many item cards are in the discard. We need that dice. Um, although they've just put it slightly off camera there, which is very upsetting. But there is a dice, and for that we need to be very grateful. <laughs> There we go. So there are six item cards currently borrowed in Preston's discard pile. He's debating playing a uh, choice band there. So he's attaching it to the Greninja break. So it will deal more damage. And let's see, based on the damage that he is putting on, yep, that should be a shadow stitching attack. And what I love here, what is fantastic from Owen, he's got the KO. Okay, even though that splash energy is still on there, it's hidden, but it's still on there. You know what? Preston can have a Greninja next turn. There's no Greninja break next turn. Owen is going to be content here to just sit there and just use armor press and just keep attacking turn after turn after turn. Yeah, it's important also for Preston. This Splash Energy would recover the Greninja and also the Greninja break if they go down, if they are actually knocked out. But in this case, he was not able to find another Greninja to evolve either of the Frogadiers in the bench. So that means he is limited indeed to a Greninja here. With the Splash Energy going into the discard pile, he picks all of the Greninja breaks evolution uh, Pokemon back into the hand. Yeah, I mean, here we go. Owen is coming here. And he's, he's just taking such a huge advantage. He's able to, you know, to, to just get free prizes up. But it's not just that. It's a ball state. He's got two Golisopod. Neither's KO'd. There is no Greninja break coming down this turn. Maybe, maybe there is multiple Greninjas this turn. And then maybe... He can get a Greninja break next turn, but Owen's just taking one-hit KOs. As a Golisopod player here, what Owen really needs is to get free energy on and be armor-pressing every single turn. He's got two Golisopod, both of which have a double colorless energy and a grass energy, or equivalent thereto, attached. 
He's got a double colourless energy left in his deck. Even if Preston draws into a second enhanced hammer, which he might, Owen is going to have one more double colourless energy. And at this stage, Garboda or no Garboda, I think Owen is really in control of this game. Golisopod's first impression gets one KO, but then it only hits for 60. But as soon as you start using armour press consistently, that is the... It, it really is. I don't want to say that is the game, but it's not a million miles away. Yeah, despite the very slow start, the Dutch is now running over Preston here, who is struggling to uh, maintain a nice board state. And Owen, on the other hand, is uh, indeed again denying prize cards with a Sarola, picking up that Golisipod that was heavily damaged, putting down again that Wimpod, who's, which is again available to be evolved next turn. And now he finally finds that Garbo Toxin Garboda. That almost seals it. And I just, the second he put it down, I just heard one voice from the crowd going, oh, in a kind of, oh, yeah, he's got there. So, unfortunately here, it is not looking good for Preston. I mean, Owen has the advantage here, unfortunately. It, it is just so difficult because Greninja does turn off Owen's abilities during his next turn. Then it goes back to his turn. Garboda's ability comes back online because it's not during their turn anymore. And then, of course, Greninja break. Those giant water shurikens do absolutely nothing, which means an absolute maximum of 80 damage per turn. That is not great against a 210 HP Golisopod that is getting one-hit KOs. This is not an auto-win for Owen. There are certainly ways that Preston can win this game. Unfortunately, when Owen gets a Garboda with a Floatstone attached and a Golisopod with free energy, those ways of winning the game become much, much bigger yeah. long shots. Yeah, and for Preston, I think he needs just too many things at the same time now to still make a comeback possible. So he has a couple of different Pokemon and trainer cards available in his hand, like the Ultra Ball, but at the same time, he will have to discard many of the resources. So I, I don't think that it's uh, really working out for him well. So he's trying to figure out what kind of options he still has to turn this game around. There are very few, though. But this is one of the big things about having a 75-minute final rather than a 45-50 minute Swiss round. He's got time. He knows. Now, I don't think they have a clock that's sitting there staring him in the face, but they know they've not been playing for that long. Preston, if he was in game two of a Swiss round and he thought there were 15 minutes left, he'd probably be conceding right now. But what's the point? They've got plenty of time to play out this game. It's about information. <laughs> Preston can see what's in Owen's deck. He can see what kind of counts Owen is playing. He can try and get a really good sense of the deck list, see if anything's unusual, and it gives him time to think about how he might play the second game differently. He gets him information. He chills for a bit. Owen, Owen knows how he wins this game. Preston, he's got to be a lot trickier. Yeah, Preston can, for example, be watching out for the amount of Acer Roller that Owen is playing because with Greninja not being able to have a high damage output just like Golesipod is picking up one-hit KOs, he needs to understand how many Acer Rollers are available to Owen. Is he playing any puzzle of time or whatsoever? So this will influence his strategy in the next game uh, when we are going into best of three here. It really will. Now, Owen here does only need to take two more KOs to win the game. Preston has got himself a Greninja break. But with this Greninja, you've got those kind of four stages of evolution. The Froki, the Frogadier, the Greninja, the Greninja break. And you really want them stacked on your bench. So right now we're seeing, OK, he's got a Greninja break. Problem is, if that Greninja break gets KO'd, next turn Preston has a maximum of a Greninja. Whereas if he's able to get a Greninja this turn, next turn he can have have a Greninja break. Now, great news for him. He got a field blower to get rid of the floatstone on the Garboda, and it looks like he has drawn into that second enhanced hammer. But of course, we know that Owen's got that double colorless back in his deck now because he used the ace roller. So he's actually got two in his deck that, to which he's got access. He's going to have a slightly easier time getting them. Preston, the ideal thing here would be a double giant water shuriken, getting rid of that Garboda, but he can't. He's only got one Greninja break. And also the good news for Owen is after that N, he was drawing into Guzma and a Professor Sycamore. So that N trying to slow down Owen, it didn't really work in this case. And Preston now attaching a Splash Energy, debating on what kind of attack he's going for. I think here he's probably going to go for the Moonlight Slash. He doesn't need to turn off Tapu Lele's ability because, well... 
there's no bench space. And he can turn off Garbona's ability. <laughs> Doesn't really do very much, unfortunately, because time it gets back to Preston's turn, that ability's back on. Owen's not using any abilities next turn. So Preston here might as well go for the Moonlight Slash. The only real question is, does he do 60 and keep the Splash Energy on there? Or does he do 80 and get the Splash Energy back to his hand? And you've got to think he keeps the Splash Energy on there. So when it gets KO'd, all of those frogs go back into his hand. Giant Water Shuriken coming out here. He is placing the damage onto the benched Wimpod here. As you can see, discarding the water energy. And now I think the only thing left to do for Preston is to announce the attack for... Is 60. it 80? It's 60 in this case. Oh, no, it's 40, sorry, because, After of course, the armor press. Golisopod's been using armor press all game. When I look at this matchup, I'm always like, armor press does 200, it KOs a Greninja break. But it also reduces damage done to you next turn by 20. So it's almost like it doesn't need that extra effect. It's great in this matchup without it. It's almost just kind of like, oh, yeah, and by the way, Got a little bit more armor next turn. Yeah, now for Owen to keep attacking and to increase his damage output, he would need to move the active Galizipod or find himself a double colorless energy. It doesn't look like he's found a double colorless energy. I just saw a float stone there, but then there's still nothing to attack really from the bench. Oh, he finds himself the rescue stretcher and a Galizipod puts it on the bench, and now it could use first impression. He could use first impression, but it would only hit for 60 damage. It hasn't gone from the bench into the active that turn. But there's the float stone. Now, this is an awkward decision because he gets the KO here. Oh, he's got two float stones. That's amazing. I was just saying, oh, but he doesn't have a float stone for the Garbona to turn off abilities. Yeah, he's actually got two float stones. Well, that's just perfect for Owen there. And now he is moving it out of the active spot. Now the Golisipod using the first impression. That's enough. He's picking up his fifth prize card there. And Preston is on a clock. And you see, and I love the play from Owen there. Hey, I'm just going to put a second energy on here. So next turn, I don't actually need a double colorless for armor press. I need any energy of any description. Preston here gets a Greninja, but it's not going to be a Greninja break, which actually would have given Owen potentially another turn to turn off, you know, to, to get the floatstone and turn off Giant Water Shuriken. But of course, it's not just Giant Water Shuriken. It's Abyssal Hand. It's Space Beacon. Preston's deck is really reliant on abilities and Garboda is really bad for it. Yeah, Preston has to play this and, this and he knows exactly that so many cards in hand for Owen. There are so many uh, options available to him to keep attacking, to still pick up a one-hit KO on the active Greninja, be it by retreating, be it by attaching another basic energy. He is disrupting Owen's hand and he only can draw into one card plus one from his turn. Bad news is, Floatstone, he wins the game. Guzma, he wins the game. Any energy of any description, he wins the game. Owen wins the game on so many things here. And now I don't think this is a great play, but Preston could just bubble for like 50 There we go. The There's row. the energy. Owen <laughs> takes game number one. He does get the energy. He takes game number one. Apparently, we're not seeing 50 bubbles in a row. Sooner or later, there'd be an ace roller anyway that would end that. There were so many outs. He was up by so many prizes, Owen, there. It didn't really matter what he drew into. He had two Garboda. Uh, sorry, two Golisopod. He had the Garboda. And there were so many cards. Ace roller would have won him the game. Energy would have won him the game. Guzma would have won him the game. Floatstone would have won him the game. There's just... There were too many options. He got ahead too much. And Owen has got to be the prohibitive favorite going into this second game. I think so too. And despite the slow start, remember, Owen really was struggling in the first couple of turns to get anything going for him, while Preston had the ideal turn two. It didn't really look good in turn number one, but he had a very explosive turn two and three. Now, if you're, if you're Preston, you really have to think, what do I have to do differently? What gives me the upper hand here? What has to happen for me to come back in this match? I think what he really needs is multiple Greninja breaks. One of the things that Greninja can do in a matchup like this, and it's funnily enough, I was, I was having a chat with Bra uh, excuse me, I was having a chat with um, Preston before this game. Like I said, I went out and met all the juniors finalists, all the seniors finalists. We had a good chat. All lovely people, happy to confirm. And one of the things he was saying was, look, the reason I play Greninja is it can beat anything. No matter how bad your matchup, no matter how bad somebody texts against you, you can win. What he really needs here, he needs multiple giant water shuriken per turn. So if we look at his deck list, he's playing free field blower. The ideal situation here is I have got two Greninja break on board every turn. I am doing 120 damage before I even attack. I get rid of the Garboda, so it's Floatstone, KO Garboda. And then every turn, it's 60, then 60, 
then 80 or 110 with a choice band. 60, 60, 110. If he can get that rolling, he will win this game very quickly indeed. He will run Owen out of options. Owen needs to do exactly what he did last game. He needs a Garboda. He needs a free energy Golisopod. Because the other thing is, if you've only got a one energy Golisopod, resetting first impression every single turn is difficult. Yeah, for Preston, who is now Mulligan for the second time, of course he says Greninja can beat any deck out there, but maybe he's underestimating Owen's will that is beating his twin brother, who is navigating also Greninja every single time. So, of course, that is something to overcome. Owen knows exactly how Greninja plays and how to beat it, and that's maybe what uh, the edge that Owen has here. I mean, if you've got a twin brother who is playing a particular deck, and then you've got one thing that you can choose to play against in the final, is there any matchup Owen is going to know better than this particular matchup. I'm going to go ahead and guess that there probably isn't. He's got type advantage. He's got ability lock. He's got a twin brother that I'm assuming has trained with him and, you know, played this matchup dozens and dozens of times. We're off to game two. Let's see if Owen can close it out, but let's see if Preston can get multiple Greninja break. He is going first. Yeah, and the good news for Preston is he also has a second basic Pokemon. There's a stereo active that doesn't have any retreat cost, and there's a Brooklet Hill for another Fro and Preston is taking this time to understand what is in my price cards. We can uh, help you out with this. There is a Greninja hidden, but no Frogadier, which is very important for him. That is the big thing to look for. There's actually two Ace Roller and a Guzma and a Floatstone in Owen's prizes. All of those could be big at some point to get out of the active. One of the things I'm thinking looking at Preston's board, that Star U has got 40 HP. That's very low. We have 60 HP Star U that we could be choosing to play. The reason that most players don't, free retreat. Here's the thing though, he's got to retreat it because Tapu Lele double colorless energy, how much damage Julian? Well, 40? Yes, I'm just not, I'm not the only one doing the numbers today Ooh. Julian. You made me nervous there for a second. <laughs> so the Wimpod <laughs> is active for Owen and we know through its ability that it can retreat for free as well even though it has free retreat costs and Owen is starting with an Ultra Ball here. Maybe even going for the good old combo Tapu Lele and Bridget if he doesn't even have it already in his hand. I know, that is what everybody wants. I know that saying, oh, he's Tapu Lele, ultimate for a Tapu Lele for a Bridget. I know we've said it in almost every game. Other than players like Todd who are like, ah, I'm going to play free Bridget, so I don't <laughs> have to ultimate for a Tapu Lele for Smart a Bridget. Man. Generally speaking, though, it's just too good. Now, he's actually gone straight for the Wimpod there, ah, and the reason is very simple. He's got two Ultra Balls and a Professor Sycamore in his opening hand. He can get two extra basics without playing a supporter. At that stage, you don't need Bridget. You want to play a Sycamore, draw into some energy, etc. So I love this play. He's going to be able to retreat the Wimpod into a Tapu Koko. Having a free retreater to be able to reset that first impression every turn, really, really nice. Yeah, that is a fair trade-off. And he's looking for the Tapu Koko, who does not, which does not have any retreat cost. Before retreating, he still goes for a... Uh, rescue stretcher there and shuffling back in a Garbo, a uh, Garboder, and I think it was a Galisopod GX. I couldn't see, unfortunately, it was incredibly quick. I believe he did discard a Galisopod earlier in the game. He can get them back, that's all well and good. What he needs really here is two Wimpod, two Trubbish. He's got two Wimpod, there's a Professor Sycamore, four seven, and a Trubbish, and a Floatstone. And now I don't know if Owen's going to agree with me here. Sometimes I like putting a floatstone on the Trubbish early to try and get my opponent to play a field blower early in the game so that later on when I really need the floatstone to stick, my opponent has fewer field blowers left in their deck. Owen choosing not to. He's got a free retreater in the active. He's got two Trubbish, two Wimpod. The only thing he could possibly want more is energy. But I think at this stage, Owen's going to look at his start and go, yeah, Yep, I would agree with that. I approve of that start. And now Preston, of course, he has that mission, What, uh, like every Greninja player in turn number two, he needs to water duplicate here. He has an Evo Soda and even access to Stami very early on, which is huge for him later when he has the Greninja break to recover energy over and over again. And now Preston just has to make sure that he doesn't draw into any Frogadier so that the water duplicates max out at free. And we see this with Greninja players quite a lot. They will choose not to play a supporter if they've got a Frogadier in the active. Because if you play an N and you draw into free Frogadier, well they're not in your deck anymore so you can't search them out with water duplicates we've all played Greninja and we've all gone, ah I can play an N I'll get away with it and then drawn a Frogadier and gone, why? Why would I play the N? 
Nothing like that from Preston. Of course, now that he's got a full bench, he's not going to be able to grab a Remoraid. That means there's going to be no Octillery early on here. But of course, he might just be thinking, ah, oh, abilities are probably going to get turned off anyway. Yeah, and there might be space on the bench soon anyway, as Owen is trying to get a first impression going immediately. He wants to go ahead in the price race as soon as he can. And there we go. Uh, he promotes the stun. He thinks it's so important for Preston that he's eyeing it out immediately. However, his hand there, looking at Owen's hand, there's not really much that he can do. I don't think there's an attack coming this turn. No. No attack coming this turn. He used a Guzma to draw the Starmy into the active. Starmy has a retreat cost of one. He's trying to force Preston into wasting energy. Hopefully then he can turn off ability so the Starmy can't recover the energy. But He's not got a good hand at all. And this, this is how Preston wins this game. If he can get some Greninjas out. Let's say he gets two free... And there's an Evo Soda, so we've got a second Greninja. Greninja wins when it has multiple Greninja on the field. That is the key. And although there is a floatstone on that Trubbish, I said I like to leave it there, try and get my opponent to play a field blower. I don't think Preston's going to. Because in this matchup, what Preston thinks is... When I drop a field blower, I'm K in the, uh, K in the Garbador. A nice reaction there, Julian. What you seen? Well, Preston has an interesting decision there. He has the N in hand. He had no energy available to him. So he says, OK, I have to play something to give me access to energy and make use of the situation. But at the same time, he knows, of course, that N is helping Owen out of that situation where he either didn't have any energy and nothing to evolve his Wimpart. It's a huge play. The one thing I will say is, we look at the board state here. Preston's thinking... I've already got two Greninja. Maybe I end and get a third Greninja. Even if I don't, I could well end up having two Greninja breaks next turn. This, this is how I win the game. So Preston's thinking, yeah, I know I'm giving my opponent a new hand, but I think my board state is good enough at the moment that I can afford to give my opponent a new hand and it will still be okay. And that's exactly the decision he made there. And he has energy. So there's an all trouble discarding to energy. Uh, he's not too worried about discarding it as he knows he can always use the space beacon. And now he can even look for a third Greninja making room for, in, for many more Greninja break to come next turn. I love this play from Preston here. Owen might play a Guzma next turn. If Owen plays a Guzma and KOs a Greninja, then Preston is down to maximum one Greninja break next turn. And he needs every turn two Greninja. Greninja breaks. So by having three Greninja now, he is guaranteeing that he might have. I know that sounds weird, but He's making sure that he could have it. Whereas if you've only got two Greninja in play and one gets KO'd, there is no possibility of two Greninja breaks. He is making sure that possibility will be open. Although, as always, it's going to depend what he can draw into. Just he's got the Greninja doesn't mean he's going to top deck the Greninja breaks. No, that is what he is trying to accomplish next turn while we are now passing into Owen's turn. He found a double colorless energy and is attaching it to the Wimper, trying to uh, one-hit KO the active Greninja. However, he's still did not find a Golisipod GX and looking at his hand there is another choice band so he is attaching two choice bands no it's a Professor Sycamore luckily for him it is indeed a Professor Sycamore so now he gets to see seven more cards and there's a Golisipod GX right in the window and we hear the woo from the crowd. Somebody saw it. Somebody noticed it. I do like how I can hear the kind of crowd reactions here. An interesting play from Owen. He chose to discard a trash Lanch Garboda. And I think the reasoning here is incredibly simple. He wants the Garbotoxin Garboda, which I'm I'd be, willing to, I'd be willing to say with some degree of certainty, it's probably what he's going to search for here. Now, even if his Garboda gets KO'd, he's got a Trubbish ready to evolve. But that double colorless is a painful discard. He's got four. Preston's got two Enhanced Hammer, which means Owen discards one, two Enhanced Hammer come down. He could be stuck with one double colorless for the game, essentially. Yeah, that is painful indeed, but at the same time, he says, I don't want to see any more beacon coming from the Stami. I don't want to see any giant water shuriken next turn as, the, as Preston is threatening at least two water shuriken uh, coming up from a Greninja break. So he's able to retreat the Tapu Koko, and he's going to be able also to pick up the KO on the active Greninja. And probably using Armor Press there. Even though First Impression does more damage, Armor Press still gets a KO, reduces damage done by 20. So... 
We do see another Greninja come down, and again, this is what Preston wants. He wants to begin every turn with two Greninjas down. Now, he does go for a Froakie there. He's got an N in hand. I think that's probably what he's going to have to go for here, but he needs a lot. He really needs two Greninja break and free energy, but really here, he's going to need a Field Blower to get rid of that Garboda so that he can use Starmie to get two of those energy back. All right, there's a discussion going on. I think Preston announced that he was going to use the Brooklet Hill here. However, the bench is completely full, so Preston cannot make use of that. And I think uh, this is exactly what the judges and the players are currently discussing here. Hopefully, we will get a bit of confirmation on that in a minute. Of course, Brooklet Hill being a stadium where you search for a basic water or fighting Pokemon, put it straight onto your bench. Well, if you don't have a bench space, you cannot actually use that, so you shouldn't be able to do anything. Now, we do see two prizes here being taken by Owen. So Owen has taken a second prize here, which I believe means we've had a prize penalty being given. We are going to wait for confirmation from the judge on that. We are in the finals of the international championships. Prizes, these penalties get escalated. This is the highest level of competition. The only way to beat this is the world championship final. So we need players to be really, really on top of their game here. And unfortunately, penalties do escalate more quickly than we would sometimes see. No, I think you're right, Ross. I think this is exactly what happened until we have confirmation here at least. So um, it is indeed a price penalty as we just heard it. So Preston was not able to use Brooklyn Hill, still did and had information and was looking at his deck. So there's the price penalty. At the same time, you mentioned, Ross, this is the highest level of play. This is a final of an international championship. And of course, there are some nerves involved here as well. So you have to give it to the players. Sometimes these things happen. Absolutely. Now we do see... Now, we did 90 here, so yes, confirming that Armour Press was the attack last turn, as I can only imagine it was. Hitting for 90 because of that choice band. And, you know, huge shout-out to the judges here, keeping us informed, keeping us up to date with exactly what the rulings are, so we can pass it on to you lovely ladies and gentlemen at home. We all want the information, and everyone's making sure we've got it. Speaking of getting it, Owen is playing a Professor Sycamore here. He's trying to get some more cards. Double Colourless is a great card here. Maybe he puts it on the Golisopod, maybe he saves it for a just in case of enhanced hammer play but I really like what we're seeing here now Owen has actually evolved that Garbona on the bench so he doesn't have a Trubbish down I think he'd quite like another Trubbish but he is looking here quite nicely he's gone ahead he's now up three prizes and of course you're prize rushing against Greninja it's taking those prizes before your opponent gets fully set up. That prize penalty really helped him out there. And it was an interesting decision. You mentioned the double colorless energy in Owen's hand. I think he preserved it completely, so didn't attach it at all. So he wants to see what is Preston going to do. He has two Golisipod GX ready to go, one with a rainbow energy on the bench, so he could use it for either. If the one is stuck in the active spot and there's an enhanced, comma, uh, enhanced hammer coming down, he could attach it to the active and keep attacking. Or if it's going down completely, he has a benched one that could take place. If I'm Owen, I'm just waiting. I'm waiting for those enhanced hammers. One of the things that can happen in this matchup for Owen, he can end up with a single energy Golisopod sitting in the active, just doing 30 with first impression or 60 with weakness. 60 with first impression. 60 with first impression. That is not how you win this game. You need to make sure that you've got that armor press. I know he plays Ace Roller, Guzma, Floatstone. There's no guarantee he's going to have access to them at the right time. If you find yourself with one energy on a Golisopod, your damage output is not enough to end up winning this game. That is one of the ways Greninja comes back. And I love... It's a subtle little place, keeping that double colorless in your hand. That is one of the great plays we're seeing for these seniors. Yeah, speaking about the comeback, that's exactly what Preston is looking for. And he's trying to start it with the field blower. So again, the abilities are back on. His Stami can use the Star Beacon. And also, if he finds Greninja breaks, they could use the giant water shuriken. So this is what he needs, including some more energy, to make sure that the Golisport GX on the active spot goes down and that the game goes back into Preston's favor. Now, he has got that Starmie back, so the energy shouldn't be an issue. He's got one break. Can he find that second break? He doesn't. Two Greninja break here. He would actually be able to do two Giant Water Shurikens. KO that break point Garboda, and there's no Trubbish ready to evolve next turn. Owen knows that. Owen has got a very nervous turn here. Looking to see, can he get the second break? A KO on that Garboda plus an Enhanced Hammer could be a big 
big swing here, but it doesn't look like he's got the enhanced hammer. It doesn't look like he's got the second Greninja break. He does have the space beacon ability now after playing the uh, field blower. But once again, Preston needs this big combo to get himself back into the game. And at the moment, he doesn't have it. And now he is thinking about recovering energy, at least that's what it looks like. No, this was indeed a giant water shuriken there and picking up the KO on the Tapu Koko. He was picking up a prize card in the process. Looks like another Brooklet Hill. That won't be of any help here. No, there's a Brooklet Hill in play. Nobody really cares about Brooklet Hill at this stage. Owen doesn't play any basic water or fighting Pokemon other than the Tapu Fini GX, but I'm Fairly certain we're not going to see that hitting the bench today. And Preston has a full bench, so can't use it anyway. So he does get to do a whole bunch of damage here, but he hasn't got the KO, which means that Owen is going down to two prizes remaining. This is the time when a Nason Roller would be amazing. He doesn't have it, but I love the grass energy on that bench Goliath support. Now he doesn't need a double colorless. Now he needs an energy to go for armor press. Even if Preston hits the enhanced hammer on the rainbow, Owen still just needs a double colorless. He's putting himself in a wonderful position to try and finish out this game. And he's got the flowstone for Garboda. He has everything and even has another Trubbish there in hand. And I think he's going for the crossing card. Yeah, there we go. He's pulling back that Glycipod GX onto the bench. Well, we're already taking a look at the prize cards. Most likely Owen is going to pick up a uh, Guzma here. And he is promoting Glycipod GX here in the active spot. I love this play. He was thinking about putting the Garboda in the active, but then a field blower would then lead to one giant water shuriken and an attack would actually KO the Garboda, and he doesn't want that to happen. Trash and Lance Garboda could put that in the active, but it's got a high retreat cost. What if he doesn't get a Guzma? We know he did, but he didn't know that. So he puts up the other Golisopod in the active. It can take a hit, but another field blower. I want to say that's number two from Preston now. I think so, because there are two floatstones in Owen's discard pile. He just double-checked that, and Preston found that field blower just in time. Now, he, I think he needs some more time on his side, as he is promoting Octillery and using another giant... No, there's a Guzma coming in, which is exactly what we said. Oh, the Trash and Lance can't retreat unless he's got a Guzma. What Preston doesn't know, what Owen does know, he's got a Guzma, he's fine. There's the Guzma coming up, and now we have the Trasher Lance Garboder active for Owen. He's thinking about, Preston is thinking about maybe uh, he can evolve another of this Froakie. Let's check if there are some more Frogadier left in his deck so he can make use of that Evo Solar that he's having in his hand. First of all, the Giant Water Shuriken is picking up the KO here on the Golisipod GX, so he picks up two more prize cards, almost equal now in prizes. So Preston really working hard on that comeback. He is. I don't know how well he's going to be able to do it. He's got to stop Owen taking two more attacks. And I don't know how he does. The next prize card that Preston takes will be that second enhanced hammer. He's already used one. The other one is prize. At the moment, Owen's energy is actually safe. So if he's got that, well, he can take a KO this turn. We know he's got a Guzma in hand. The Owen, oh, he's actually got a grass energy as well. He's not got a great hand as it stands at the moment. What he does have is a Grass Energy and a Guzma. He can take a KO this turn. That's not an issue. The issue is, what's he actually going to be able to do? Oh, he's got a second Guzma. That should guarantee him the game now. Yeah, you he can Guzma this turn, then he can Guzma next turn, then Owen's an international champion. <laughs> That's how it works. Owen, you can see a little smirk on his face when he was drawing into the second Guzma. He's attaching the grass energy on the bench. Golisipod GX. Now he's thinking about what to promote on Preston's side. And Preston is looking over to him. Hey, what are you going to do to me, buddy? It's the Greninja. It's got to be the Greninja. Because you KO the Greninja here, and then there's a maximum of one Greninja break, which means there is a maximum of 170 damage from Preston. That Golisopod will not be KO'd next turn. Next turn, Owen is just going to announce Armor Press for the win. At this stage, I don't think there's anything Preston can do. Owen's already got the Guzma in hand. Maybe an N? But if he plays an N, he's not playing a Guzma. And Owen just announced his armor press. We know he doesn't have an enhanced hammer. We know he cannot end and Guzma, and he needs both. I mean, unless there's some ridiculous bubble shenanigans, and I'm willing to bet there's probably not going to be, I don't think there is any way here that Owen loses this game. A second his next turn comes, he's either going to Guzma armor press or just announce armor press, and either way, 
Owen will be the international champion after this turn, unless I've missed something, or unless Preston really goes for the bubble shenanigans. You never miss something, Ross, we know that, so <laughs> we can see Owen is feeling it. He, he knows exactly how close he is of claiming that title of the international champion here in London. He's cutting the deck for Preston, who is looking for some sort of help after that Brooklyn Hill here, but looking at his hand, there's not really much that he can see and find there, so there's an ultra ball, there's another Professor Sycamore in hand for Preston, so maybe one more Pokemon and seven additional cards that could help him here. I think he's really just playing it out. I don't know if he even look through his deck then. No, I think he just uh, really just used it. Oh, he's using Abyssal Hand, so he's emptying his hand. He's choosing to use Abyssal Hand before he goes for it. Now, he very may well be tempted to use the Guzma here, try and pull up a bench Pokemon, buy some time. Like I've said, if he gets two Greninja Break going... He's going to be absolutely fine because he can spread a bunch of damage around. What he doesn't know, what Owen knows, what we know, what all you lovely ladies and gentlemen at home know is that Owen actually has a Guzma in hand, ready to go. And I've been in Owen's position, not in an international championship. I've, I've only been to two and I was behind the caster desk for both of them. But I've been in tournaments. I've been in a situation where in a final or in a big game, I'm about to win and I'm sitting there thinking... Now, I'm sure I'm going to win, but I must have missed something. And I'm running through every possible scenario. What can he do? Are there any cards which he might be playing that I haven't seen yet? Are there any tactics I might be forgetting about? I don't think there is. And we might actually see bubble shenanigans. Well, there is something that we might have missed potentially. But no, it's first of all the oh. Guzma. So he's promoting the Garbo Toxin Garboder and Greninja break right back into the active spot here. Probably another water energy. And there we go. Giant water shuriken with... 60 damage onto the uh, Golisipod GX onto the bench and there is oh okay yeah he's we just going to draw a Guzma. That's Guzma for the game and Owen will be your 2018 European international champion in the seniors division I hadn't missed anything that makes me happy but I don't think I am anywhere near as happy as Owen is right now he has just been crowned an international champion I can only imagine he is absolutely on cloud nine right now that is his happy face right there. <laughs> <laughs> and commiserations to Preston. He was he had such a horrible matchup for the final. It's the